Hey everyone, welcome back to Toasty TCG. So the new ban list is out, so let's get right into talking about it with our new three forbidden cards. So starting off, we've got Block Dragon. This is something that people have been calling for months. The Block Dragon needs to get hit. It's just a plus three, and then you can also put it on your field at the end of your turn, link it off with IP on your opponent's turn, go plus three again. The card was just super degenerate, even if you stopped the whole rock combo. If they had Block Dragon, they would just be able to keep going. So it really does make sense why Block Dragon was hit. Then up next, we have Jet Synchron. Now, when the Halka Fibrax combo started, Jet Synchron was the biggest problem for the combo because you could easily just make the combo off just the Jet Synchron alone. And as the format went on, there's new ways to make Halka Fibrax that appeared. But Jet Synchron was still a one-card combo. But the biggest problem with the Jet Synchron ban is there's still ways to one-card combo into Halka Fibrax, such as the righty and lefty driver and the DD package. Jet Synchron is no doubt the best way of going into it, but there's still one-card combos to make Halka Fibrax. And finally, in the banned cards, we have Mecha Phantom Beast O'Lion. This is something that people have been heavily debating, saying it might get hit, it might not get hit. But now we do see that it is banned. The reason that I believe it is banned is it's basically two monsters, and then you can also summon it with Auroradon, so it's essentially so many ways to get into this card. It's a starter, it's an extender, this card does so much, and if you open it, you chance... Is are you have one in the grave that you can banish to just normal summon the one out of your hand. There was just way too much going on with this card, so it was very important that it got banned. And even outside of the original combos with it, you were still summoning a Roradon, still summon it midway in like any combo. You had Rocks, you had Dragon Link, and then you have Infernoble Knights now. They were all using a lion, so it's good to see the card go. Then we have our limited cards. We finally see Double Iris Magician come back, so that's really cool because now we can go back from playing the Combo Pendulum deck and we can actually start playing the Control Pendulum deck again with the Time Graph and the Star Graph. I don't really expect that deck to do much right now, so maybe Double Iris might go to two or three in a few more months, but at the moment it is at one, so that's really cool, and I hope that the that my favorite version of Pendulums is able to make a comeback. Then we have the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardich. This is clearly to help push the set coming out Phantom Rage, but it's still a very powerful card. You can still get double Fog Blade off this card alone, but keep in mind you can't link it away, so it's kind of, you make this play and you're committing to the Bardich play. And even then, the card is still very powerful just because of the advantage it can generate. Then also we have Called by the Grave. This is something that a lot of people were surprised about, but I had actually called it months ago back in June with my banlist prediction. The reason that this card is limited, as I explained in the past, was actually to help every deck that goes second, so that way when you have hand traps, they don't get stopped. And this is a format where your hand traps really need to resolve, so getting hit by Called by the Grave basically seals your fate in this format. Going first is just way too powerful right now, so hitting called by the grave was definitely a good decision, and it actually does make a lot of sense. Then finally in the limited cards we have Harpy's Feather Duster finally back. This is the most powerful back row removal in the game. It's really cool, I wonder how this card is going to perform in the upcoming format. Then moving on to our semi-limited cards, we finally see Seer and Graph go to two. A lot of people want these cards to go straight to 3, but that's unfortunately not what's happening here. The cards going back to 2 is still a step in the right direction, and eventually we might see these cards going to 3. It's really cool to see BA get their cards back. And then we also have ABC and Totally Awesome going back to 2 each. So that's another one that's really cool. It's kind of Konami acknowledging that they made a mistake, that these cards should not have been hit to begin with. However, I would be perfectly fine with Totally Awesome staying at 1, as it is a super degenerate card, very easy to make, and it just negates everything. So you can just make multiple Totally Awesomes in a turn again, so that's going to be kind of annoying, but it does make sense to see these cards both come back to 2. And then, finally for the Unlimited cards, 
We have Makura the Destructor going back to three. This is a card that has a errata recently, kind of making it a, a lot less good than it used to be. So it makes sense that it goes back to three. We have Tour Guide of the Underworld going from two to three, so that's really cool. It's another one that just really makes sense. It's going to help push product for Phantom Rage. And it's also just a very good card for Burning Abyss. So it's really cool to see Tour Guide go back to three. And then we have Ivagishki Gust Kraken. This is something that no one could have been expecting. Um, I don't have much to say about it. The Gishki Hand Loop might be coming back. It might not. We're going to have to see what happens with Gust Kraken. And then we have Monarchs finally at full power again. Pantheum of Pantheism going back to three. Basically Pot of Greed for Monarchs. Really interesting, and I wonder how Monarchs are going to perform this format. And then finally we have Sky Striker, Mecha, Widow, Anchor. This is something a lot of people were asking for, but I believe it's mostly just like the subpar Sky Striker players that could not play Sky Strikers without three Widow Anchor to kind of carry them. Most people didn't want this card to come back due to it just being a very powerful degenerate card, but it, it it's back. It's unfortunate. Most people were saying that Sky Strikers had their time. This card did not need to come back. And this was mostly just the really bad Striker players pushing for this card to return. What's really weird, though, is we don't see any support from the other four 2019 decks. We don't see... Salad getting anything back, Orcus getting back, anything back, or Thunder getting anything back, but Widow Anchor back to three doesn't really make too much sense. But guys, let me know what you think about the ban list down in the comments below. And also, right above the comments in the description, you can find all of the Toasty TCG social media. That's going to include the Facebook, the Discord, and our TCG player affiliate link, which when you use is going to cost you nothing additional on your purchase and it helps support the channel directly. I just want to do a quick shout out to everyone that has used that link. It's very helpful and I appreciate it so much. But guys, like I said already, let me know what you think about the ban list down in the comments below. This is going to be Toasty TCG signing out.